welcome to this Growth Engine Community Inbound Deep Dive. And in this session, we're going to be talking all about personas. Now, if you've not come across the terminology persona, avatar, um, then this is going to give you not only a highline overview, uh, but what we're trying to cover in this session is to explain what they are, why you need them. Then we're going to go through a template of um, an ideal persona uh, to give you an idea of how detailed you want to be with these. Uh, a quick pro tip here, the, de you know, the, 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 the more detailed, the better. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of resources as well. And um, there will be a, a resource like a template that you can download and all the links as well. So if you're serious about um, you know, getting more targeted, um, understanding personas, which are an absolute critical fundamental of your business, especially whether that's from a marketing perspective, a customer service perspective, a product development perspective, uh, then this uh, deep dive webinar is for you. So without further ado, uh, let's start get started and let's move through to the first slide. Um, so just dealing with a couple of these here, um, you know, what is a, a buyer persona? Um, you know, what are buyer personas? That's, uh, you know, the sort of the first point that we, we're going to be covering. Well, buyer personas are a, fic a fictitious or fictional generalized representations of your ideal customers. Now, when we use the word ideal, uh, I prefer in truth to use the word most profitable. Um, there's a lot of ideal customers out there, but if they're not profitable and we're not going to be able to sort of make those happen, um, in, you know, and you know, you don't want to be over swamped by doing too many business, too much business with people who uh, are not profitable. But I understand there's lost leader customers out there that you can, you know, maybe materialize up and build up. But um, so you know, maybe scratch that out. Put is it our ideal customer, most profitable customer? Um, there's also got to be a fit there. You know, you've got to like working with people. Uh, it's part of some being super profitable if they're a royal pain in the butt um, type of thing. So that's a balance that you know what that is. But so the fictional, but what they do when you get these right, they help you understand your customers and prospective customers a lot better. And it makes it a lot easier for you to, whether you're tailoring your content, structuring your customer service team uh, to their specific needs and behaviors. Uh, you can also allow you to address any concerns, you know, of the different segments within customers. Because if you've ever spoke to somebody either at a networking event or anything like that, where it's, you know, you say to people and say, oh, so who's your ideal customer? Anybody who's interested in plumbing or anybody who's interested in improving the business or anybody who's got a legal dispute, that, that, that's not right. You know, um, there's a great saying out there, if you market to everybody, uh, you market to nobody. Um, you know, so bear that in mind, you know, you're wasting your ad spend, your ad dollars, your ad pounds, you're wasting that by trying to go too wide. So, uh, you know, by getting personas zoned in, um, you know, you can, and segmented into different groups, you're going to be in a lot better position. So the strongest buy personas are based on market research, as well as on insights you gather from your actual customer base. And that can be through surveys, interviews, etc., etc. And I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about that as we move forward. Um, so if we now have a look at the next section, depending on your business, you know, you could have as few as one or two personas or as many as 10 or 20. Uh, the key aspect here is um, a, a rule of thumb, whatever product or service that you sell, promote, usually I would have a specific persona for each one. Now, I just want to address this right out of the gate. If you are, uh, how would I put it? If you have got a product that is, you know, and let, let's use an automotive example. I think everybody understands vehicles. So if you've got a Ford, there is a Ford Fiesta, there's a Ford Focus, there's a Ford Cougar, um, you know, and things like that. Ultimately, the three different personas just because they're buying a Ford motor car and not a van, because a, a, a van or a truck, you know, Ford customer will be different again to a car customer. But you can imagine a Ford Fiesta, it may be, you know, a, a, a young driver uh, who's, you know, or a retired old person, you know, lady or man who's driving a little Ford Fiesta. You know, if you move up to the Focus, that might be a family hatch. So, you know, 
young couple or, or whatever with young children. And then if you go to a Cougar, that's a crossover, sports utility vehicle, SUV. You know, it may be either a more adventurous or a growing family, um, you know, or, or a sports focused in, you know, person who maybe wants to put, you know, surfboards or canoes or kayaks on the top. So ultimately, you know, you would need to go down at a granular level, but for this deep dive training, we're actually going to stick into one uh, because creative personas is not something that you delegate uh, to just somebody to do at a weekend um, while you're doing something else. It is a team effort and it's multi-department and cross-departmental um, and they do take time. Um, so when I say you might need to create 10 or 20, if I said to you it might take 12, 15, 20 hours to perfect a persona to its ultimate uh, stage, you know, if you try and do 10, that could be 200 hours work non-stop. Most businesses don't have that resource to just simply you know, say, hey, do that. You know, obviously, if you're working with a marketing agency or a growth agency like we have the successor, you know, that's part of retainer work that people do and develop. But, but the, the point I'm trying to get here is that, you know, start with the single most popular product, single most profitable service. You know, maybe that's maybe not the profitable, but it's the one that you do most of and you just want to refine. Um, let's start with one, let's practice, refine it. Once you get to the next stage, then we can move on. So what are biopersonas? Quick recap, biopersonas are fictional people um, who you create off your ideal or most profitable customers. They have, they, you know, they get you to have a far better understanding of the specific needs, behaviors, psychographics, demographics, geographics, um, you know, all done on research through interviews, surveys, real customers, lost customers. And depending on the business, you may need to do, you know, more than one. Okay. So, how can you use personas? We've touched on it a little bit there, but at the most basic level, personas are going to really allow you to, you know, dial into the segments of your audience, whether that you're getting uh, prospects coming in, you've got existing customers in, or you either try to upsell or cross-sell or expand your service network into. And for example, you know, an obvious case here from a marketing point of view is instead of sending the same lead nurturing emails to everybody in your database, uh, you can segment that by, by a persona. Um, and you can tailor that message according to what you know about these personas. So let's say you're a broad brush B2C company and you offer a wide range of services from, you know, teenagers who are maybe just starting out to work, uh, in work. Uh, families and to the uh, elderly retired and you know that might be a garden center it might be furniture for you know home furnishings it might be apparel that you use um, what you understand is you know if we use apparel as the example um, the type of apparel and clothing that a teenager would wear uh, would be a different demand than what if a growing family would need for young children and again then for the uh, retired uh, senior citizens, all different types. But if you have a maybe an opt-in onto your, your website where they opt in for, um, uh, you know, a catalog, you know, you could add in, um, you know, a field, you know, eight, give us your age range, you know, up to 20, 20 to 35, 35 to 50, 50 plus. Now that may be a little bit intrusive. So it could be, you know, um, are you a teenager? Are you middle age? Are you retired? It doesn't matter, but it's a segmentation question. And then once they get that brochure for your apparel or link for a voucher, whatever the promotion is, then ultimately you could segment those. So if it is a teenager and they've, they've been honest, then you can start to use copy and nurturing and offers and sequences that are going to be related to maybe more fashion related, current trends, uh, you know, maybe influencer, you know, stuff out there. Families, you could put baby wear in there, you know, baby and crash type of clothes um, and cross selling to the, those type of products, whether that's baby toys or growing families or back to school items. And if it's the retired, again, then you could customize that to the to the to the retired and the senior citizens. So I hope you get the eye understanding by and you see the power of that. Because if you're generally targeting follow-up information to everybody, you know, what's going to be interested to one demographic is going to be totally, you know, either, you know, red hot or, you know, super blue cold to others. Um, so if you take the time to create then, you know, 
those, you're really going to be able to target messages and get a lot more value out of those. So let's continue because we've got to go a lot to get through. But also you need to create a negative persona. And you hear a lot of people talking about creating personas, but they don't always tell you to create a negative persona. And that's what this is about here. So a net, what is a negative persona? Well, that is really the bad apple in the barrel. Um, you know, it, it's what you don't want to target. Um, and if you do that, uh, it's going to lower your cost per lead um, and it's going to increase, you know, you, you know, far more productivity. And, you know, we'll talk more about that later on. Um, but as a quick intro, it could be that it's just, you know, your, your product is, it, there may be the right age and geographical and psychographical demographics and all that might be right. But your product mm. might just be super, super, super high ticket or it may be super, super, super low budget and for people. And if you if you did a budget product, you know, you may have a specific, you know, persona that's right. But, you know, if they're over or uh, earning over, I don't know, fifty thousand dollars, forty thousand pounds a year, you know, usually they're going to look for a, a more higher quality product or reverse that. You know, um, if they're earning under fifty thousand dollars or forty thousand pounds then your products, maybe from an affordability or a, a value is just not right for them. So, so we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment or two. Um, so we've covered there about negative personas. So the other benefit it actually gives you is, you know, how can you use personas? Well, we talked about that follow up nurture sequence. And when you bring in a lifestyle, life cycle stage, apologies, and that's some, you know, where they are in that buyer's journey, because, you know, we'll do a deep dive on buyer's journeys later on and in a separate uh, deep dive, because um, that's a totally separate section in its, in, in its own right. But if you look, if, when you're just getting ready um, to, to, to sort of look for a solution or, or to, to make an improvement, if you look down here, this is where you as the prospector experience some sort of symptoms. You know, at the consideration stage, you know, you've, you've, you've clearly defined what that is and you may be now looking for options. And then at decision stage, you know, you're getting ready to select a vendor and, and make that investment. Um, so by understanding your persona at the granular level, and we'll talk about that when we show you the templates and all the detail you can go into, you can create content, not only in your marketing messages, but also for your sales team. So your sales team have got valuable content to provide a, a prospect who's maybe just making an initial tentative inquiry or the walk through your store. Um, you know, if they've tried something on or the, the, the asked questions or compared in the consideration stage, you can start to use specific pieces of consideration content. And then at decision stage again, and by understanding the persona, what the buyer's journey is and what stage that they're at, you can tailor your content all out of the granular detail of the persona. Um, so buyer personas in summary are going to seriously help you map out and create highly targeted content uh, to engage them and hopefully take them through to becoming customers. So when we look here now at the top, how do we create buyer personas? Well, buyer personas are created through research as we touched on earlier, surveys, interviews of your target audience and documents with granular detail. I always recommend that you subset out some existing customers, some existing prospects, and those outside of your contact database who might align with your target audience. It could be professional advisors. You know, if, if you want to know something about somebody who's maybe buying a house, um, you know, you could ask a realtor or an estate agent, you know, or a mortgage advisor, uh, what they know about them. And I said earlier that it's not uncommon to spend 12, 15, 20 hours, you know, de developing a persona out. Um, well, if you think about it, we recommend you speak to at least 12, ideally 15 people from each subset or each subsector. So if we've got, you know, persona A, and we will talk about giving them a name in a moment or two, but if we talk about subsector A, uh, there and you're going to maybe interview six or seven customers what would that take 15 20 minutes 30 minutes of time you know it doesn't take long to start racking up two three four hours you know you might then want to do some prospects three or four prospects or maybe you know argue there's an argument to sort of 
interview more prospects than customers because it's, you know they're current you know existing customers may have bought out of loyalty you've been a family member and maybe they didn't give a more accurate picture uh, and then if you're going to go to you know two or three advisors or, or people outside of that or suppliers and manufacturers it doesn't take long to do you know 12 and if you're spending 30 hours uh, 30 minutes a piece with them minimum 20 30 minutes minimum then yes you're into six hours and then you've got to transcribe that transcribe you know so if you use a service like rev.com to transcribe the video audio recordings to get that out and then somebody to top edit that it's it's not difficult to to rack up these hours one thing that i will say is if you think there's a shortcut to doing personas the right way you're seriously mistaken um if you if you're sat there now and you know all about the community we're here to help but in these deep dives these, these are detailed sessions that are ideal to be created as workshops for you to, for you to take back to your business and implement these. So, you know, if you're getting one of your colleagues to watch this webinar um, and you think, oh yeah, I could shortcut this, I can do this in half an hour or 20 minutes, so I'm gonna speak to my mate Dave or my mate Sandra, um, then yeah, you might get a completed template, but just because it's filled in, it doesn't mean to say it's right. Um, so my recommendation is if you're not serious about committing to really put, as I say, even if you've doing six people and then the other time to research the rest and transcribe, you're not putting a day, a day and a half minimum um, into persona development, then respectfully you're wasting yours, you know, your employees, your management team's time. And whilst you might get close, uh, you're not going to get the ultimate um, situation. And, and you know the ultimate uh, inside track from what they really want so <clears throat> that's just me sort of you know putting it out there uh, you can leave me a comment below on this article and i'll get any questions answered for you obviously the team will do and of course if there's any um community members who's actually gone out there and gone through this process you know maybe you could share some examples either whether you've done it to this level or whether you've had great, better results by doing this or not so you can leave that there. So what you're looking at the bottom of this screen is snapshots of the template that we're now gonna move into, because in theory, what have we covered as a recap here? We've covered what are bio personas, and we're just gonna sort of, you know, jump back up here. Uh, so what are bio personas? We've covered what are negative personas here, and you know, uh, a bio persona, you know, which is too advanced, students were looking for knowledge or potential customers are just too expensive to acquire like I touched on earlier so we covered on that and I bounced over that slide earlier um, how we can use personas what the buyer's journey is and then you know the subsector to do that so let's jump into the template I'm just going to change screen here for one moment or two and this is a snapshot of what we've just done this is a template that we use in our agency um, and I'm going to talk through each one um, at a high line level. Uh, let me just remove that. I don't know why that's in there. Okay, see, we're doing this live. Uh, so, this something there, just for clear. I'm not going to spend too much time here because I have got a fully completed one where I can give more uh, examples. So, in this part of the, of the deep dive, I'm just going to show you what a typical uh, persona template at the granular level looks like that we've developed and the good news is uh, if you look below this uh, deep dive uh, webinar there is a PDF version of this that you can download you can take away you could create it yourself transcribe it into a spreadsheet or another you know power deck PowerPoint deck or Google slide deck or you know just a some other form of uh, processing if you want to know what we're using if you look in the top URL up here at the top we use a tool called Extensio where we map on build all these out like an online web-based um, tool that not just does uh, personas um, although this is heavily modified for our agency uh, the one inside Extensio is a little bit flatter but it's a great way to start and I highly recommend it so let's talk about it the first thing you're going to do is give your persona a name uh, why do we do that because when a customer comes in there in this case in our case we call them entrepreneur eddies entrepreneur eddies or entrepreneur eleanor's so that's what ellies as we show them entrepreneur ellies and entrepreneur eddies so you give them a name and it then starts to get real they're a person you know they're not just a number 
Uh, down the left hand side, uh, how old are they? And that could be a range. Where do they work? What job title do they have? Do they have family? Do they have children? Where are they located? If you're a local store, maybe you're trading more geographically. Um, type of education that they have an income. Uh, personal values. Um, again, I'll just take that out. Uh, what's important to them? And here's the money questions down here in the middle. What challenges do they have? What pain points are they suffering? What else do you know about? Type of personality are they? Introvert, are they thinkers, etc. Tonality, do they resonate with? Do they appreciate being spoken directly to? Or are they, um, you know, do they need wrapping up in cotton wool? What are the character traits? What brands are they interested in? What brands are, um, you know, uh, do they get motivated by, if, if that makes sense? Who are the gurus? Um, and what business goals do they have? Come down here. What business stage are they at? Now, the other point to think here is if you sat there thinking, well, Mike, I work on B2C, well, these can be, uh, these can be um, modified. It wouldn't be business stage. It, you know, if they're maybe learning guitar, it could be, you know, what stage are they at learning guitar? Are they, instead of time in business being from one, three, five, ten years, you know, are they a new bit of guitar lessons? Are they, are they mature, you know, the five-year-olds, um, uh, sorry, not five-year-old, apologies. Are they five years experience in playing a guitar, but just want to get to that next level? You know, have they learned the basic chords, but one of them starts to connect them and start to play, a, you know, a, a song? Um, instead of revenue, it could be what their income or the budget that they're prepared to spend. Um, and then, you know, what stage do they want to get to instead of revenue being 500k wanting to get to a million or 10 million trying to get to, you know, 100 million. It could be that they're a novice and want to get to intermediary. You get the idea. So um, for this case, maybe I should have said this at the beginning. I apologize. This is a B2B um, persona template. Where do they hang out? What information sources do they tap into? Uh, you know, you could be detailed to state what these are, what blogs or magazines. And, and guys, don't accept from your team if you do delegate this or join the team. Don't, whatever you do, uh, say, oh, well, the search Google. That's not an answer. You know, if the search Google, everybody searches Google, right? But, you know, are they looking, are they watching YouTube videos? Are they paying for paid courses like lynda.com or LinkedIn Learning or, you know, some type of, you know, Neil Patel course or Ryan Levesque course, are they buying that type of stuff? You need to get granular. Um, and I suppose, you know, you've, you've really got to, you, I suppose, I'm going to deal with on the next slide when I show you a completed uh, persona. But when you work as a team, it's not about filling boxes in. We can all fill boxes in. I did touch on this earlier. We can all fill boxes in, but you know, what what does that gain? We don't fill it in if it's not going to move you forward closer to you know what you want to do. Um, so um, you need the detail, is, is, is what I'm saying, guys. So what favorite social channels, you know, preferred channels, motivation, you know. Do they get motivated if you incentivize them? Do they get motivated by fear? Some people do. And you might you know, talk about that. Now, I'll give more examples when we get to the detail on the next slide. The next stage is the core issues. You know, what keeps them awake at night? What's the biggest danger they can't see yet? These are the questions. This is you know, the reality. Get these answered. Get your teams to answer these. Get different teams to answer these. Get your customer service team to answer it. Personas are not just about marketing. They're about sales, they're about customer service, they're about finance, they're about production, product development. You know, they're a, they're a business-wide initiative, guys. Whatever you do, make sure you understand that. So get these answered. Before and after, what do they have today? And then when they buy your product or service, what's the transformation? How do they feel today when they've bought your product or service? What's the transformation? What does their average day look like before the brain? What does that look like after? And what is the status? You know, and that's more of a business thing, but are they underperforming? Are they under pressure at work? You know, whatever it would be. And what was the result of the transformation? So once you've completed this, and I say, we're gonna go through this on the next uh, slide. What I then do is the person who's responsible for putting this together, use some screen recording software, Okay, we're on Zoom. You don't have to use Zoom. You could use things like Vidyard or 
or Loom, these free like Chrome extension plugins. What they should do is they should record a video. There's a video here on the bottom of here. As you can see, it's 18 minutes and 49 seconds. That's how long that video is. Uh, and I'm gonna play that video here so you can see that. There's me in the top there. Uh, and you can see this is what we're gonna do. It's an 18 minutes, it's not, it's not fictitious. It's, it's fully there, it's an 18 minute video. Um, why do we do that? Because the person who's filled this in, the person who's ultimately responsible for this, um, they should talk through and fill in the gaps. If you write things down and somebody then reads it, they will interpret it one way. But if you get an audio visual commentary where like I'm doing here, we're gonna dig deep into each of these sectors. You could talk around, you can tell stories, you can give examples, and then that gets shared with your marketing team, your content team, your sales team, your customer service team, and then they watch it as part of their onboarding. This is who our ideal customer is. This is what we do. This is how we make this happen. Um, then by recording a video, it's gonna give you a far, far, far better understanding. Not only is you, but your entire team that's gonna help you connect those together, guys. So I always recommend that you do that. It doesn't have to be 18 minutes, it could be 10 minutes, it could be 30 minutes, who cares? As long as you put the time in to explain and, and, and drill down to what you put in there. So this is a blank template. Like I said, there's a, there's a PDF of this underneath this where you can take away uh, to do this. Um, so let's look at a completed one. So a little bit of, for, for you guys who are old enough in here in the UK to understand Blue Peter, uh, here's one I made earlier. Uh, it was a famous saying out of the old Blue Peter TV programs where they show you what you were trying to build and then, you know, without having to go through the full, uh, you know, the 20 hours of work, we would then show you the finished article. So I'm going to move over. And here at the success of in our agency, um, we have an uh, episode called Entrepreneur Ready. I touched on that earlier. Uh, here's uh, Entrepreneur Ready. Uh, this may uh, be uh, reminiscent to some of you guys. You're in the community, you're high growth entrepreneurs. Uh, it may be relevant, but so let's get stuck in. So Entrepreneur Ready is between 28 and 35. He's the managing director or the CEO or the owner. He's in a, in a committed relationship with a property, married, He's already got a child, uh, you know, in, in you know, in, in his family. He's in the UK. He's in a city, although we do have US-based uh, uh, entrepreneur editors as well. But this particular example is UK. Um, he is in college. Oh, sorry, colleges. He, he went through his education in college, so he's 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 better than high school. He's not quite degree. His income's 35 to 50,000 pounds here in the UK, so about 45 to 65,000 um, dollars. You know, he's, he's early in his journey. He, he's not cracked it yet. That's why he works with us. Um, he's already doing a million in revenue, and he wants to 3x his business in the next three years to get to three million. So that's a little bit about what we know. His personality. He's a bit more extroverted. He's a thinker. Um, he works on intuition, he's not judgmental, he, he perceives things, understands them. The tonality, he's the decision maker. So when we're writing copy or we're putting campaigns together, we, we're doing that when we're attracting entrepreneur as the decision maker. But we've been respectful to his influencer, either his managers or his fellow directors. It's future focused on the outcomes with some immediate fires to address. Um, so he's looking, you know, sometimes he looks a little bit too further forward about what the future would look when everything's working. Um, but sometimes his feet are on fire, you know, and, you know, he's knee deep in crocodiles, sometimes a waist deep in crocodiles. Um, so that's something to think about there. And by the way, guys, if you head over to the growth engine daily, there's an article, um, that is called the continuous loop to success. That's what we mean about future focus. So go ahead, when you've done this exercise, go over and, and go and look at the uh, continuous loop to success. Um, it covers why I believe this is my personal view and I'm open to debate on all these things. You know, you hear everybody say success is never A to Z. Uh, they sh and then they show you these graphs where it's zigzagging or it's swerving through paths. I don't believe that's right either. I think it's more like an Olympic running track where you keep going around and cycling. But that's for another session. You can go over and read, read that article in the Growth Engine Daily um, called Continuous Look to Success. But that's what we mean there. Um, is above the line interests. So is on return on investment. Um, where above the line and below the line comes from, that's credit to Skip Miller, M3 Learning. 
Uh, again, I would highly recommend you go check out Skip Miller at m3learning.com or just search Skip Miller. Tell him Mike Mitchell said hi, he's a friend of mine. I, I interviewed Skip on a podcast, um, I think it's episode 24. So again, you can head over to the Open Mic podcast section of the community uh, and check out uh, an interview I did with Skip Miller in the Presido in San Francisco, uh, all about sales and, and, and above the line global line stuff. So that's a really awesome podcast from a, a serious A-lister, five times New York best-selling author, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the thing about entrepreneur ready as we get back onto play here is failed before, but wants to do it right this time. So he's hit a wall, it keeps hitting a wall and says, I'm not doing that anymore, I'm going to invest correctly and go forward. So we, when we're addressing entrepreneur ready, we're dealing with things like this. So before we go through the middle bit, I'm just going to talk to the right, down the right hand side here now. So character traits, he's motivated, he's a visionary, he's resilient, he's failure recovery ability. So when he hits that wall, he'll pick himself up, dust himself down, uh, dust himself down and go again. He likes to think his next level thinking. He's not just doing the basics. He wants to try and push and go hard and he appreciates technology. He loves Mercedes Benz, Virgin, Apple, Sony as, as examples. Um, from there, and it doesn't have to be tech, it could be like here in the UK and the States, there's a brand called Innocent Fruit Juices, it likes Innocent Fruit Juices, it likes Tiffany for jewellery, Boss Clothing, um, that type of stuff, it, it, you know, he's is, 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 is got ambitions to put his children in private school, so he's, he's looking at that type of product. The gurus in the digital space would be something like Gary Vee, uh, Robin, Sugar, Buffett, Ferris Jobs, etc., etc. We talked earlier about his business goals, wants to 3x his business, but he also wants to secure investment to deliver the plan. And this is the plan. He's ready to go. Then he probably wants to exit, whether that's in an MBO or through his VC five years. The key thing for entrepreneur ready, he wants to position himself as a market leader. You know, he believes his business is, wants to be the best and has got the potential to be the best. Um, so he wants to be a leader. Um, he wants to be one that other competitors look up to that wish that they were his business. A personal values point of view, he's driven, he's persevering, confident, sincere. He's righteous, he's a family man. He, he believes in equality and he's diverse uh, through recruitment and he's a, a viewers on life. He's creative, he's intuitive. So definitely financially motivated and futuristic. So, so far you can see what we know about this guy. Um, so let's talk about his challenges. So if you think about how people make decisions, they make decisions really uh, out of one of three things. There is articles out there where there's five reasons to make a decision. And I don't disagree with that. I just try to prefer to dr dr drill them down to three. And the first thing why they move is because they want to gain something. Okay, they want to gain, they want to move forward. So that's why they make a decision to buy something or commit to something because they want to gain something. The second reason why they move is because out of fear, the fear of missing out, fear of breakdown, fear of loss. You understand that? And the third reason why they move is logic. So gain, you may want to buy, a, uh, buy into a non-exec or a coaching service because you want to gain their knowledge and move your business forward. Perfectly fine. Uh, you may want to go to the gym because you want to gain better fitness and you know lose weight, um, get a healthy lifestyle. The fear, you might break, buy breakdown cover on your vehicle. Uh, you don't buy it because you want to buy it. You may be running an older car than you maybe would like. You may be fearful of it breaking down and you don't want to be stuck at the side of the highway or the motorway. So you buy breakdown because of the fear of you know, being stuck at the side of the motorway with the kids in the car in the middle of the night. Who wants to be in that situation with no protection? So you buy breakdown cover. Logic. It's the natural thing to do. So if you've got an old central heating system and it's really, really, and it keeps breaking down, the cost of having it repaired, the logical thing to do is maybe invest and buy a new central heating system um, because it's going to be more efficient, better on gas or oil or wood pellets, whatever you're burning. And it's a logical thing to do. Um, you could even use that in the fitness center. It's logical, I want to look after my health. So you could see how fear, gain and logic or gain, fear and logic works uh, from there. And uh, that's why people move. So understanding those three things, let's look at the challenges of entrepreneur already. And when you're building your persona out, you've got to get to the challenges first. He struggles to raise capital. He's struggling to create his challenge. 
is to create a plan that is low risk of failure because it's failed before. Remember down here at the bottom, you know, it's failure resistant, it's failed before. It doesn't want to fail again. So this time it wants to do it right. We know that, we'll listen to what they say to us. Um, so, you know, and it wants a low risk of failure and a high probability of success. And I know what you're thinking, doesn't everybody in, in life? Well, of course we do. But Entrepreneur Ed has been there before and he is now ready to commit. Don't forget, let me just remind you, this is the agency avatar that we look for when we work in a HubSpot agency. This is what we're trying to pick up in our executive growth engine, executive when we're raising capital and growth engine ventures. These are the type of customers that we're looking for. It might be you, and you might be saying, hey Mike, this is me, this is me. Well, if that's the case, you know, this is not a pitch for us, by the way, but we're happy to talk to you about that. But moving past that, if it's not you and you're thinking, well, that's not quite me, I'll make some resonance here and resonance there, well, that's fine as well, no problems. But this is our avatar and persona, not yours. So you've got to get that work and you've got to really dig, dig, dig deep and connect to what's important to you. I'm asking you to, you know, just at this time out, to take, um, to take uh, this, um, this particular uh, time out to say, understand this is the success of a growth engines avatar, not mine, but really think, well, you know, flip that into what do I need to do? How do I connect with my own business, if that makes sense? So a couple of quick ones. Naturally, he wants to increase revenue, but his real driver is he wants to increase profitability. We know revenue is vanity, profit, sanity. He needs to systemize him at his existing team. Silos are starting to appear in his business. He needs to recruit, recruit new quality team members and he's competing with other more established businesses. So it's a bit safer for somebody to go and work for LinkedIn than it is, you know, new app on the block uh, social network. So you understand that maybe you have lost out on good candidates because they feel a little bit safer at a more established business. Entrepreneur already suffers from that. He's certainly short on time um, to do everything. He's definitely got skill gaps in his business. And whether that's across any of the fundamentals of finance, ops, people, sales, marketing, governance, personal development, his skill gaps. He's got poor data, you know, his spreadsheets here, handwritten notes here, his thing. Doesn't have real, you know, real life AI dashboards that's driving his intelligence. And ultimately, because of that, he's struggling to put it all together. So you can see for us how we can address some of those as an agency, as a growth agency, as an executive services of venture capital. Uh, company, you know, or, or venture capital intermediary company. We can address these type of challenges. So because these challenges are evident in, in Entrepreneur Ready's business, look at the pain he's suffering. It's holding him back. He's in limbo. He's, he's sort of neither in or out. He's just stuck. The lenders that if he is trying to raise revenue or capital, um, they only see him as a high risk, which frustrates him because he believes in his business. But you know, if you've ever worked with venture capitalists or banks, you know, they don't look at the fancy presentations, they'll look at the numbers and they'll look at the history and Entrepreneur already gets frustrated with that. He also frustrated the, about the pain point of where and how to start, what to do first, who to trust. He's been burnt before, don't forget. His revenue is not rising fast, but his cost base is, which is eating away at his margins. His profits are not materializing because of that ops cost, as I said. His dysfunctional marketing and sales aren't connected. His client services or his fulfillment teams are struggling. They're siloed. They're not working together. He's got different levels of debt maturity. You know, not on the same page. Service levels, not to any satisfaction. Here's something that I say about this type of entrepreneur. To the open world, they always sort of say, yeah, we're, we're best at what we do. We take pride in what we do. We're good. You can trust us. But you know what? When he puts his head on the pillow at night, he's being honest. It's not about being, being, uh, you know, being dishonest with his customers, but he'll go out with that front and say he's the best. But when he puts his head on the pillow at night, he's thinking, do you know what? I know my fulfillment's down a bit. I know my marketing's a bit poor. I know my operational manufacturing or my buying is, is not as good as it should be. Won't admit it, but deep down that keeps him awake at night. So as you can see, that's something there. Um, We've talked earlier about unable to get the best talent. So he's either having to pay more money to get less quality. Uh, he has a lack of plan or his competitors offering better opportunities. Um, the dilution of focus means he's getting average results across many key areas instead of being able to get key, you know, key results in all areas. Um, he's having to spend major time on minor things instead of uh, major time on major things and minor time on minor things. 
is unable to commit the time to learn new skills quickly enough to get the results in the time frame that he needs. He doesn't have three to six to nine months to, to learn to then implement the, the business has moved on. He needs it now or certainly in a shorter time frame. Budgets and resources are not efficiently used, so there's leakage in his business um, affecting performance. Mm -hmm. So you can see the pain he's got off these challenge. What else do we know? And I'll skip through this a little bit quicker. He loves the entrepreneur lifestyle likes the success of teacher date but wants more he doesn't see all the risks fully he acknowledges them out of the side of his eye but focuses them back on the rewards that could be achieved he suffers from shiny ball syndrome if we're all honest sticking his hands up we all do we've all bought something and thought sob that or but you know, why did we do that or whatever he lose the focus and move on he appreciates certainty after failing and wasting money he will always make a quicker than average time bound decision thinks it through, works his numbers, but then makes his decision. He, make, he takes action. He has one or two confidence inside his business. He runs ideas past, but usually has a strong partner at home in a relationship that acts as an external assignment board, who doesn't get embroiled in that day-to-day -day of the business. Uh, he maintains and believes his company is the best, like I said earlier, service delivery externally, but loses sleep over the fact that he's not delivering internally as much as he would like. He justifies it by convincing himself that he's working on it, then it will get better. He just needs to get that next revenue level to go again. He does sail close to the wind and out of necessity, not always choice. Maybe the inland revenue, the VAT, you know, the, the taxes, he's spending that money instead of, you know, and then he's struggling to find it at, at, at the tax quarter or tax year end. Aspirations to move to a bigger house personally, own a second holiday home maybe, provide private schooling for his children, and maybe he wants to become a property investor. So just look what we've known about entrepreneur already. That doesn't come out of doing that in an hour or two. That's multiple interviews. I think we've done 15 or so interviews on various people around that uh, granular detail. So at this stage one of this, what I want you to do is leave me a comment below on stage one and just tell me what your feedback is. What do you think to this detail? What questions do you have? Let's get these answered for you. Any questions about gurus or goals? If you've got a B2C one, maybe ask me a question. How would you approach that on a B2C? Get those questions asked, and we'll then we're going to validate that on stage one. So I want you to type stage one question, Mike. Bang, get that in there. Now we move on to stage two. Um, where do they hang out? You know, we talked about Google searches, the industry blogs, get the titles there. Association websites, we've got FCA there, Financial Conduct Authority. Marketing blogs, investment blogs. Consider where they get the content from, in what format do they watch it? Are they, are they more you know, video-based or interactive? LinkedIn, what motivates them? Systemized processes so that can see the journey where they're gonna take. And you can stop this video anytime and read these. I'm not gonna go into every line item because we've still got quite a bit to get through. About another 10 or 15 minutes. So what type of marketing do the one most of? You can see here. What's the favorite social channels? See LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, podcast industry or growth specific. And behind this, guys, we have these all listed out. What type of industries they are. His information sources, books and audio books, high, magazines very low, blogs getting up there. Websites and naturally he's researching that after he's come off a blog, an audio book. You know, it's, you know, it's many times we've listened to an audio book or read a book and we've said, hey, head over to the resources page or this blog or this website, check this out. Um, not as much on conference and expo. He sees it a big drain of his time. He can be he can learn quicker online or YouTube. Preferred channels, doesn't really engage with traditional ads. In fact, he's blind to most of them unless there's, you know, there's a gold bar at half price or something that they can flip for a quick buck. Uh, online and social is high. Referral is a big word of mouth person. Um, doesn't do a lot of guerrilla efforts at a PR. It's something he should do, uh, but he doesn't know that yet. Video is a good consumption for him. He's motivated by incentives. You try and threaten entrepreneur already with fear-based copy and content. He bounces off that. He thinks you, it's a scam. Very growth focused. He's not a power freak. He's a humble type of guy uh, and he's a social sort of person he, he has a good circle of friends the business stage is normally up to three years in business he's currently doing around a million and he wants to get to three million we talked earlier on do you remember when we did the template about these are the money ball questions and these are where you really need once you've got those other things and drill down answer these questions and a pro tip here don't just get your marketing team to answer these don't just get your sales team to answer these 
Don't just get your client services team to, uh, or your customer service. Don't just get your production, your manufacturing to do these. If you're if you've got an executive team, don't just get everybody else. Everybody answers these. He's got company-wide. Set up a survey monkey, a type form, a Google form. Get everybody to answer these and then cross-reference it. And then you're going to start to see patterns and commonalities. And that's also, you know, when you, you're building your personas, maybe I should have covered this right out of the gate. I apologize for those who missed that earlier and or I missed it earlier. Um, you don't need everybody in your business, but certainly whoever's head of marketing, they should run this in the marketing team. Whoever's head of sales, whoever's head of services, finance, executives, get four or five. And then cross-reference it, overlay them and see where the commonalities are. Um, and it also takes the time down because uh, if you interview three people as an exec, your salespeople interview three people, your marketeers interview three people, your finance team interview three people, it cuts the work down as well and spreads it, plus it brings them in as a joint initiative. And it also, for those out there say, yeah, but you're asking different personalities. If you do it from a structured set of questions, the different personalities bring up different type of um, sort of results. And, you know, I found when I've done 12 interviews, I get tired and I'm not saying a shortcut this, but, um, you know, it, it gets a little bit tiresome. So, you know, picking three or four people out and doing it and getting somebody else who's competent to three or four, you, you know, you keep that energy in the room and, uh, or energy on the phone or the screen share and you do that. So what keeps them awake at night? You can see you're having to retreat. It doesn't want to be seen as a failure. And you can read that there. The biggest danger we can't see yet, upscaling too far and being able to downscale quick enough. That's a major flaw in high growth businesses. <laughs> Um, continuing to invest into a fractured multiple supplier system. It needs to bring it together. What's the greatest opportunity? Well, of course, to provide firm foundations that he can physically build on. What will it cost them not to have our product or solution? Um, well, the lost opportunity in year one is doubling year two and fivefold in year three. Um, underachieving the dreams, missing out being a market leader, and able to diversify. They're just some of the, the core ones. There is all the things, but you know, we ended up with 10 or 20 things, but we condensed them down to the most popular. Who will they become as a positive impact for buying our service? Well, become market leader, command and authority, trusted go to company in niche, business who can attract the top talent, et cetera, et cetera. I'll let you read those at your leisure. What are their hopes and dreams? Well, they want to exit, get a multiple investment, get set up for life, or re reinvest into another business, buy another business. What do they need? They need a proven system, a track record, one that's proven, not one that's somebody's guessing and working on it and learning off them. They need something that's, it, 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 they've, they've tried and, and bought. You know, we've got a great saying here in our agency, in our executive and ventures team, and that is you buy cheap, you buy twice. Uh, we don't own that statement. It's been around for thousands of years, no doubt, but uh, we, we live on it. You buy cheap, you buy twice. An entrepreneur that he's bought cheap before, and he's had to buy again, and he now wants to do it right. Um, so what are the need? Proven system. Final word, question on the mind. If I hitch my wagon to this growth engine, what happens once I've installed it year one? You know, yes, it can dynamic, it can move, it can grow, et cetera, et cetera. Before and after. So what do they have? Tremendous opportunity. After, strategic foundational system. How do they feel? Well, they're frustrated at the moment. Was the buy-in, they've had it implemented, they're confident they're in partnership, they're going on the right path. What does the average day look like? It's, it's fractured, it's attention, multitasking. Once they come into the growth engine, it's more structured. What is the status? Well, they're the next entrepreneur of the year, pending, because they never get there. Ultimately, when they get, once, they, once they get implemented and results start coming in, they become accountable growth driven, and then they can start a drive forward on the, 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 the growth engine, uh, and, and they can you know, deliver the three to five year plan. This particular recommendation, um, for entrepreneurs, he starts in our agency game and growth engine plus. So, what my question is: What product would they you need to sell them to achieve this result? Uh, what would they need to invest in? It's not what you want to sell them; it's what gets them the result. What moves the needle? What's the product value proposition? And what does it cost? And then we talked earlier about recording that video in their own words. So, I'm going to go back to the top here, and I'm just going to recap before finishing out over the next few minutes with another simple online tool that you can use if you want to get started with personas faster. But before I do that, if you know what you, we know about Entrepreneur Ready, 
doesn't it make sense if we break this down into three key areas of, of marketing, sales, and then customer fulfillment, client services, as we call it. If you know this about Eddie, do you think, and this is where I want you to do a stage two, ask me a question below or leave me comments below, a stage two, do you actually believe that you could develop products Right, copy, whether it's you, your marketing agency, your outsourced contractors, whoever you use yourself, do you believe you could develop products better that meet the needs if you had all this information? Do you believe you could write copy that really hits the needle if you know it's fear, gain, or logic-based? Do you know believe that you could make references and build case studies around what he likes, what makes him comfortable? If you're dropping references in there, if you were to advertise online, okay? Here, where do they hang out? If you knew they were on specific channels and you wanted to do, I'm not talking about the old-fashioned banner hat, but retargeting ads or anything like that, it makes sense to put it where he's looking, where his eyeballs are. Why put it somewhere where his eyeballs isn't? Doesn't make sense. If you are doing paid media, paid social, you know, here, LinkedIn in mail. And I know a lot of people say, Mike, LinkedIn in mail, sponsored in mail, LinkedIn advertising is expensive. Well, expensive as what? If you get 20, 30, 40, 50 pound a lead on LinkedIn, it might be more, might be less, depends on your niche, your keywords, your target audience. But you get five key customers coming off that. Is that not better than paying two, three pounds on Google on per click and then 20 or 30 pound per conversion uh, by the time it converts, you know, or Facebook lead ads? You know, surely you've got to look at what the value is, but you know, you wouldn't be putting a lot of Twitter cards and Twitter ads up for entrepreneur already. Um, you know, you might put product placements and shop placement ads into Instagram, Facebook, not so much. You know, YouTube advertising, yeah, you can pull him off and drop him on some longer form content to bring him into the top of the funnel or the middle of the funnel, depends on what he's watching. But podcasts, you know, start targeting podcasts. We run a podcast, you know, my the old mic is specific because entrepreneurs listen to podcasts. We pick up, you know, leads off the open mic podcast that listeners regularly. A lot of time and effort to do that and again that's we'll do a deep dive all about how to set up run and, and drive a podcast later um but 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 certainly doesn't it make sense that you can start to maximize that information sources again if you were to put display adverts or banner ads on some channels and the tonality the copy that you're going to do again we know who we want to deal with. If people come to us under one or two, three years in business, we're doing less than a million. Our agency services are probably not going to work for them, but our executive services might, where we can coach them, or our uh, venture services might have, uh, help if they want us to help them with the debt and prep them to move them up and get them into VC. Um, you know, that might be a better service for them. And then again, you can imagine what the sales copy looked like on the landing page or the ebooks. It's addressing all these challenges and pain points. Are you here? Are you suffering this? Would you like to be somewhere else in a positive mindset? Yes, of course. And then we answer these. So the question that I've got for you is stage two, leave me a question or a comment below. Do you think by knowing this, you could position your marketing to attract more qualified leads to your business? Do you think that your sales team content that you would create to help the sales team through their awareness, consideration, decision stage, you could provide them with better content to help move the sales faster through the pipeline at more profit? And thirdly, if you know all this about Entrepreneur already, your fulfillment and customer services teams, do you think they would be able to better serve you? Just a yes or no. Yes, marketing. Yes, sales. Yes, fulfillment client services. Or no, no, no. Or maybe, maybe, maybe. I'd love your feedback. So as we wrap up here on this first deep, deep dive on personas, uh, I want to give you a quick short tip, courtesy of HubSpot. I'll put this link below as well. So it's www.hubspot.com forward slash make my persona. And if you want to, you don't want to go to all the hassle of going 12, 15 hours, you can get started here. So if you look here, make my persona tool here, um, as I say, there's a little sort of uh, tuition here, uh, all there. And then, you know, you can jump into here, you can download a guide. Um, and there's a little buy a persona ebook here that is all uh, ready to go. 
Um, I'll drop this persona ebook in as well um, into the um, into the uh, resources section, um, and that's a great little tool. There is a make my persona uh, interactive guide as well, as you can see here, uh, that you can jump on uh, with HubSpot or courtesy of that there. And you don't have to be a HubSpot customer uh, to do this. It, it's something that. You know, you could use in any sort of uh, walk of life, whatever system that you're doing, um, you know, and then as you can see, this is how it works, quick seven step. So let's just call him Entrepreneur Eddie. And let's let's say this is Eddie here. And as you can see, we're gonna move it forward. Uh, I'm, and by the way, I'm not doing, this isn't Entrepreneur Eddie. I'm just gonna quickly move this forward. Uh, let's say he's in finance and he's got uh, up to 50 employees. Uh, you know, what is their job title? Um, you know, CEO, how is their job measured? Net, bottom line, uh, what do they, who do they report to? Well, they may report to the VC or they may report to the bank. Don't, don't, don't think that just because they don't have a boss that they don't have a boss, usually they do. Uh, he wants to triple his growth. Uh, slight typo there. You see, I'm doing this live. Um, that's jumped out live. Just one second. It's jumping out a bit. Okay. And here we go. I'm going to leave that one. There's a typo. What is his biggest challenges? And that could be, I don't know problem solving and decision making, collaboration and creativity, and then we'll drop in, he wants lead generation as well. Okay, responsibilities, uh, revenue, and team management. Um, what tools do they need to do the job? Well, they're gonna need a CRM, they're gonna need invoicing software, uh, scheduling software. And then you could put other things in there. How do they prefer to communicate? Uh, the like face to face, um, you know, the like face, the phone. Um, yeah, they're going to do courses, online courses, and they prefer LinkedIn. So as you can see here, we've just created uh, a little persona for Entrepreneur Ready. It's not Entrepreneur Ready, by the way. And then you can add a new section in there, and you can build that out as well, which is nice and easy. Uh, so this is hubspot.com make my persona. Um, you can then save that and you can uh, share that. What I'd love to do is I'd love to see what your entrepreneur already is um, in the, the group. So if you want to paste that below, you can even download it as well. Put a comment so you can see you can download your little PDF. Uh, and you can build that out. So you don't need Extensio software like we use, it's just that we use that for the thing and you've got something here. And it gives you the ability to build up and create something that um, you know, is uh, gonna really get your team on board and really help your marketing sales and bottom line. So thanks for tuning in to uh, this deep dive on personas. We appreciate your growth engine development. As always, go do the hustle, Go make it happen and we're going to catch up with you in another deep dive soon and I look forward to seeing your comments and your progress below. Thanks again guys, have an awesome day.